Okay, being after 7 o'clock, the Zoning Board of Appeals um, May 11th hearing is now open. First order of business is reorganization of the board. So we need a uh, nomination for a chairman first. I would uh, nominate Rick Peterson. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Do we have any other nominations for chairman? <laughs> you don't all count. I don't. <laughs> no, um, unfortunately. All in favor of Rick Peterson as chairman? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, second is nomination of vice chair. Do we have a... I'll uh, nominate Andy Verbine. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any other nominations for vice chair? All in favor of Andy Burbine as vice chair? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Perfect. So now I get to turn the hearing and over. We have a clerk to as well. A clerk. And that can be that can be a non-voting or a, an alternate member as well. So that's. Uh, so we need a. I was not aware of that. Yeah, we, that was Amy put that in a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I'm going to nominate uh, Mr. Manning as the clerk. I'll second that. Too nice. Do we have any other nominations for clerk? All in favor of Mr. Manning as clerk? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Perfect. So we turn the, the hearing over. You want to switch or you want to stay there? I'll, I'll stay here. Okay. I didn't realize this was going to be a switch route tonight. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was next week. No. Surprise! <laughs> uh, the first order of business on our agenda is old business and new approval of minutes dated April 13th, 2023 and April 26, 2023. Um, and also acknowledgement of resolved litigation for 662 Adams Street and 166 Baker Street. Motion to approve the minutes of April 13th. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Opposed? Yes. Mr. Chairman, the minutes for April 26th are not yet ready. Okay. We'll move that to next month. Um, a question um, acknowledging uh, resolved litigation. We got the, the email from Amy on those, but do you have to read that into the record? No. No, no. no. I think just the fact you that just, it's acknowledge. really just that you, you were given them and and basically you've accepted you know as read um is there any minutes that would now be made public as a result of that resolved litigation once once yeah i would say once the appeal because well, the, they could appeal these oh, so once the appeal is over that's when once it's the appeal period is over then the, okay. the records can be yeah the minutes can be released my yeah. understanding is 662 adam street is not yet a hundred percent resolved. No, it's not resolved. Yeah. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> That'll go on for a while. Um, let's see. And we'll move on to um, petition of uh, um, uh, Michael and Cecilia Lebeni. Lebeni. Okay. I've been called worse. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> That's um, we got to find the right one here. Okay, we have to read the public notice. The Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 11, 2023 at the Abington Town Offices, 500 Glenowitz Way, Abington, on a petition of Michael and Cecilia Levangi. Levangi. One more time. Levangi. There you go. For a special permit on the 175-32I to allow construction of an accessory structure in law apartment where the existing garage is currently at 78 Captain Sands Drive. The property is located in Assessor's Map 25, Lot 5 in the R30 zone. And I'd like to invite where we're going to present this. Uh, let's just come up to the microphone and just give your name and address for sure. Michael Levangie, 78 Captain Sanders Drive in Abington. Would you like me to, would you like me to? Uh, just Tell us what you want to do. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, as you can see, uh, that's a depiction of the home 
with the uh, in-law apartment. Um, my wife and I have lived in the home 38 years. We brought up a family there. We've been in Abington 44 years. We're both retired. Don't need the big house anymore, so we looked at downsizing. Um, however, one of our daughters has expressed a desire to move back to Abington with her family, and it coincides with our wanting to downsize. Um, so we've uh, looked at taking the existing garage, the existing footprint of the existing garage, and turning that into an in-law for my wife and I, and my daughter and her husband and our grandchildren will own the, uh, the house. Um, is there any questions from the board? So that we, um, well, I have one question, which is the, the letter from Henry and Wong denying the building permit. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you know anything about that, what, what that means? Why is she, is she calling it an accessory structure? That's, uh, Mr. Chairman, town law, town bylaw language says in-laws and accessory structures are one and the same. Okay. okay. There's not a specific okay. wording was... for, it's still 175.26. Okay, I was just confused why you called that. Or one, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry yeah. All right. So you, you understand all the requirements as far as you having to you have to file an affidavit every year that it's an in-law apartment. Okay. Um, it can just be the two you and your wife. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think you meet the the square footage requirements and all that. I think Marion put yeah. put that over. So. But the building inspector, the building department sends out that affidavit bill, correct, to them? Correct. So you'll get that every year just saying that it's being used as an in-law. The affidavit? Yeah. Okay. And it, and it dies with you? It dies with me? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't carry over to the next owner. If there's a new owner who wants to use that as an in-law, they'd have to come in and get their own. Okay. Special but if permit. my daughter and her husband decide that they would like to use that for rental or family members, no. Okay. Rental, no. No rental, okay. Yes. Family, okay. Family members, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. But only family members set out in the bylaw. There's, sure. There's, yeah. All right. Yeah. But it Thank can't you. be, no, it's not a rental unit. Got it. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions or comments from the board? Um, just a point of notice that her brothers uh, had no complaints with this petition. Yeah, there were a couple of. There was a couple of attachments. Yeah, yeah. There was. No, you want to read those in? Right, just oh, okay. Um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, letters from uh, Butters. Um, and my newsletter with regards to Mike, Mike and Celia of Angie's request for the home at 78 Captain Sands Drive. I reside right across the street at 77 Captain Standish. They've been one of my closest neighbors for nearly 40 years. I have been blessed to be able to call them friends. The addition will enhance the neighborhood's appearance and stability. I very much support the addition. I'm very pleased and relieved that my friends will be here another 40 years with me. And that was from... William Levin. Me. William. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that wanted to take a seat. Never mind. What's your name, sir? Bill Boston. Thanks. Okay. Um, and then there's another one from uh, Steve Maskelko. I am writing you regarding the permitting request of Mike Levangie of 78 and Captain Sanders Drive. Um, I live at 65 Captain Standish Drive and we live directly across the street from the proposed addition. Mike is a great neighbor and we have no objection to the proposed addition. We are sure that the addition will be done in a tasteful and respectful way. Thank you, Steve Maniscalco. So, all those are written in record. Um, do we have any other questions for Mr. Levangie? I have none. Um, Would anyone else like to speak on this subject? Okay. Um, can I have a motion to close the public discussion? Bring it back to pub from public discussion. Clo uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. Close the public part of the hearing. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's good for me. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public portion of this hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now it's time for discussion amongst the board members. Do we have any questions or concerns? You want to? I don't have any concerns. No, no, I think it's. The plan looks, looks great. Well done. And yeah. It's going to be used in conformance with the zoning bylaws. So it's an in of power. Yeah. And thank you for uh, mentioning the, uh, the annual uh, 
affidavit they oh. They'd get one anyways, but just so you're not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Um, so is there any other discussion or questions? No. Okay. No. Uh, we have a motion on this matter. I'll make a motion on the petition of Michael and Cecilia, <coughs> excuse me, Cecilia Lavangi for a special permit under section 175-32I to allow construction of an accessory structure in law apartment where the existing garage is currently at 78 Captain Standish Drive. The property is located on Assessor's Map 25, Lot 5 in the R30 zone in the addition to be built in accordance with the plans submitted with the application. Uh, well, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None? Passes. So, uh, I think he has some paperwork for you to sign, right? Okay. He does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with your... Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda, agenda is the petition of Carolina Dreamy Properties LLC, 491 Washington Street. Um, and I will read that one into the record as well. Uh, the Town of Abington Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 11th at the Abington Town Offices, 500 Glenwoods Way, Abington, on the petition of California, excuse me, not California, Carolina Dreamy <laughs> Properties. <laughs> I'll well, see for a variance under section 175-21E12 to allow a tattoo parlor at, parlor at 491 Washington Street. The property is located on Assessor's Map 23, Lot 179 in the CBD zone. Um, and could you give us your name and address? Uh, just tell us what you'd yeah. like to do. So uh, my name is Elise McIver and my home address is 141 Pleasant Street, East Bridgewater. Um, but I have multiple properties in Abington and that's where I grew up. Um, so I just come here today. Um, as you guys know, I included it in the paperwork. The property used to be a tattoo parlor um, under a variance in the past. Um, so I included it in that. Then it was made into a couple other things. I think we've had like a brewery, um, a hair salon. <laughs> it's been all sorts of things. Um, and recently, um, through no fault of our own, one of our tenants had to leave, um, leaving us with no tenant. But luckily, um, we knew of a place. It's actually, um, they have a successful tattoo parlor already in East Bridgewater. It's Sacred Edition Tattoo. Um, it's been around for forever and they're doing well, so they're looking for a second location. Um, so they came to us and said that they had heard um, that ours was possibly going to be up for lease. Could they lease it? Um, and we had said that we can check with the town. So we did start everything that's needed with the town. Um, we've been down the building department a few times um, and just trying to make sure we get all our ducks in a row to do it properly and request a variance. Um, is there any questions from the board? Is the tenant going to also lease the apartment? No, so the apartment is already fully leased on the second floor okay. um, by a Linda. Um, she's sweet, so she's totally um, so far fine with everything. Um, and then we also have the building behind that, which we apply. Um, we have the CBD on that as well, so it's four business bays and then a tenant on the second floor. Um, who he's awesome, he's fine with it as well. And then the building to the next, ooh, I'm punching things. <laughs> the okay. building to the other side is our other building um, where I have Powerhouse Nutrition out of the first floor, which is my business, and then a tenant on the second floor, which is also fine with it. So we actually own all the surrounding buildings and we've conformed with CBD on the first floor um, to have business on the first floor and residential on the second floor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. So for a variance to be granted, you have to hit a certain number of requirements. Yes, for us to be able to. So right now, um, our main issue is the financial requirement. Um, this tenant that we had in there was locked in until um, actually for another year and a half. Their lease is not up um, until late into 2024. Um, and we had very short notice that they were not going to be able to stay. Um, and rather than trying to deal with, well, I don't even know if it would be possible, but the financial, um, like hiring a lawyer, taking it to court, um, suing another small business owner for breaking lease. Um, we were hoping to be able to go a different route and just get a tenant in there, which we have that's willing to pay the full price and that's willing to um, come in and kind of just take right over um, and start a lease. So really it's the 
it's the financial burden for us. Um, that's where the need comes in to have another one rather than one trying to go through a long financial lawsuit um, with ourselves and another small business and a lawyer, obviously. Um, and then the other one would be trying to find a suitable tenant. So far, this is the offer we've had that's like a full, um, they're willing to pay the full lease price. Um, and that way we can, kind of won't be stuck trying to pay for um, a tenant that's no longer in there. So that, that's one of the four, but there's others. And, and the financial hardship actually has to have to do with soil conditions, shape, or topography of the lot. So that's what a variance calls for. So, and that's why use variance is very difficult to get. Generally. Yeah, so and how that, did it get it previously? I don't, I wasn't here on the board at that point. Oh, I did it. include the paperwork. I saw, I, don't know I saw, if it says yeah, it. I did see them, but it, you do have to prove that the hardship is a result of soil conditions topography or the shape of the lot. That's strange. That's, okay. that's one of the requirements. It all, and you also have to prove that the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. So if you want to speak on that a little bit. And that the desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaws. So those are the things you have mm -hmm. to prove in order for us to be able to yeah. consider granting the family. Okay, so one it's more just, time. just one more, it's, yeah. I know lots of people think they can just come in and they variance is, um, no, uh, I, I'm not saying you, the but there are a lot of people who do it. And yeah. that we do have certain requirements yeah. that have to be No, I have spoke with someone about this. They didn't mention that the, um, someone that works here, they did not mention it had to be like soil or topographical. So that was new to me. That's why. Yeah. Um, so that's strange. But, all right, what were the other ones? Sorry. They didn't uh, tell me that. They just told me that one. Yeah. Uh, the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Okay. So do I have to explain why it won't be a detriment to the public good? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Very unprepared for that, but let me think. So, I mean, personally, I don't see a tattoo shop as a detriment to the public good. Um, and the other one is that... <laughs> Uh, the desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. Okay, from the intent or purpose. So the intent was for CBD, correct? Correct. It's during okay. CBD, and this is not an allowed use. The only yeah. the only place that tattoo parlors can actually go, and they're only by special permit. There is no yeah. There I is no right to have a, yep. a, a in Abington. There's no right to yes. have a tattoo parlor. It's just by special permit. And that's, yes industrial and highway commercial. Yep, I talked to Marion about that. Yeah. Um, we were going over that. So, <clears throat> okay. A lot, a lot of new stuff coming. Um, all right. Let me, let me, could I suggest something? I yeah. It's <laughs> up that. to you. If, if you, now that you know what the requirements are, I don't know if, if you want to take and come back to the meeting next time, if you want to take some time and think about how to make your presentation on this, that would be fine. Yeah, it's I just guess a lot of. Rather than try to overwhelm yourself tonight? Yeah. I guess I'm just caught off guard. Sorry, I don't want to cry. That's, like, that, no, no. <laughs> this is saying if you want to take if you want to take. Well, no, time. now it's another month. I have to pay for it. So, like, it's just a lot. Um, but honestly, I don't see why it would be a detriment to public good. I think I have tattoos. A lot of people here have tattoos. I wouldn't call it a detriment at all. Um, I don't think you think so either. Um, <laughs> on top of that, um, sorry, it's embarrassing. I literally never cry, but I'm just like overwhelmed. On top of that, um, I mean, obviously, we're very invested in that area of town. We bought three buildings there. My parents own building two buildings down. We're doing everything we can to like put a crap ton of money into like reviving everything, renovating all the buildings, making it beautiful again. The last thing I'd want to do is shoot myself in the foot and make it either a detriment to public good or ugly or non-usable. Like, we are doing everything and pouring everything we have into Center Abington to make it beautiful again because, like, let's be real, it wasn't. And we're trying so hard. And that's why, I think that's why I'm so frustrated, too. Because I've dedicated, like, all my time and money since 2019. Just, like, rebuilding, renovating, making it, like, a thriving downtown. Trying to make it a place where people can go. Who's, who's in the space now? Nobody. Well, who was in the space? Amber Hair Salon. Amber yeah. Hair Salon, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, had, they had moved from... They had moved four times, yeah. yeah. All right, so, I mean, that would be... 
it's not going to really change what it is. It's already been um, not a tattoo studio. Well, it was. It, it was back in 2011. Yeah. So and then it was as a detriment to the neighborhood. I mean, it definitely. Mm -hmm. It's keeping the business open, keeping the building going. More people are going to be in the area. It's already been brewery, hair salon, it's the tattoo bar. Oh, well, hair salon's allowed, so that's, that's yeah. allowed. Too, so that's fine. Is the brewery allowed? It was not. That was a that was, that a, was a second that variance. That was a variance as well. I use variance. Yes. That is a variance. A lot of variances there. So that's why I don't think it's going to be a detriment. I think, if anything, we just pour everything we have into trying to make that downtown beautiful and nice and renovate all the buildings with on every contracting, actually, um, and do everything we can to make it someplace where people actually want to go and it's not nice or So the detriment thing, I don't think it could be considered that in any way, shape, or form. And obviously, none of the abutters did either, yeah. no. or they would have said so. Yeah. All right, what's the next one? I'm just going to cry my uh, way through it, <laughs> <laughs> embarrassingly The enough. relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw. So the intent of that zoning bylaw, the CBD, is to have businesses on the first floor and residential on the second floor. I think we are confirming to that. Whether it's a business that is considered a business or not, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you said it needs a special permit or a variance no matter where it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I mean, it is conforming. It's a business on the first floor bringing people in, bringing more business to Abington. It's a reputable business that has a long-standing clientele. Obviously, that's why they need a second location. They've been around for as long as I know. So do I think it's staying? I mean, personally, I do think it's conforming. I think you have, like I said, your business on the second floor, your residential Business on the first floor, residential on the second floor. None of that's changing. We're not changing it. It's just the actual use of the business. Right, and that's. I think that's that's the problem I have is the yes. use of the business that's not allowed there. Yes. And if we grant the variance, then we're, in my opinion, yep. we're kind of so. But getting away from what the bylaw says. When we crafted, though, when not we, when the bylaws the were crafted, yep. tattooing was illegal, correct? Yeah, but they updated it when. Because they do allow for it. Well, I know they do yeah. under it, but I mean, like... Um, it's not technically allowed for anywhere without a special permit no, or variance. No, without a special permit, right. Yeah. 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 Was there a re I mean, I, was I don't know. That time. Was there a reason why they, they chose not to do... I mean, if it's other commercial uses, I mean... Well, they're very... I mean, if you look at the use table, there's... Yeah, no, I was looking at it. I mean, but it's like... Certain things are allowed in that district and certain things are, just like in every... No, I know that. I just... I, I don't understand, you know, like, like that. Uh, no, I, I... No, like, you know, like... I kind of almost put it in the same ballpark as a you know beauty salon type, but it's specifically in there. I no, know, I don't yeah. know. Like a gas station is not allowed in a CBD district. If a gas station came in here in front of us, yeah. Or I mean, if you want to be extreme, a uh, transfer station, right? And that's not allowed in a CBD district. That somebody could come in here and say, well, you know, it's. it's I so guess I don't feel like a transfer station and a. Tattoo shop or no, I, I understand, but I'm just saying. Vicinity for me, I, I do feel like it's very similar to a hair salon, a nail salon, which is two which doors I down. Don't, I don't disagree with that, but yeah, my opinion again, the way I think you change that is not, and it's not you, uh -huh. but the way that something like that gets changed is you change the zoning bylaw. You go in front of the planning board, they have a hearing on it, and if they think that that's a use that should now be, because maybe back then mm -hmm. tattoos weren't as popular when this was. A lot, you know, written, mm -hmm. but now they are. And when was it written? Do you know? I don't know when this change is made, but that's the usual route you, I think, you take is you go in front of the planning board, propose a change to the bylaw, yeah. and then it becomes you know, a use allowed by special permit or by right, but not. So when I was going through all this, they told me the way to do it was the only way to do it. Was well, that is right. Not, that's right. That's the only way right now for you to be able to take, yeah. try to get this through, but. If it's not successful, I, I would think that that would be the place you would want to go is if you're looking to get changes I just think to that's the a CBD lot to, district. I think that's a lot to ask. I mean, what I... I'm not saying it's not, but uh, I have a problem with a use not being allowed and then me as a zoning board member mm -hmm. saying, now, as one person, I'm, I'm basically changing the whole zoning bylaw by saying, now you can use that would property so, for bylaw? something that's not allowed. Would it be changing the bylaw, or would it just be granting a variance that dies with that one? For something that's not allowed. Isn't any time you go for a variance, the thing is not allowed, and yep. that's why the variance exists? So yep. it's the same as granting a variance yep. for an in-law. Yep. 
or anything else. Well, in, in laws, we don't grant variances, special permits. But yes, a variance. Anything similar. So why would you grant variances for other things and not this? You wouldn't well, be changing they, the law. Well, because if they prove each one of these So why factors, have I not proven for you? You're not proving that it has to do with shape, topography, or the, uh, the soil conditions. I mean, there is no soil. It's just I, a parking lot. And that's the problem. <laughs> so, well, yes. Yeah, so it's like asking for things you know can't be done. Which is why use variances are very rarely given. Because they, you can't, it's very difficult to say that I, I understand use you're saying it's of, very rarely given, but it's literally been given the past two out of three rentals. I, 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 on as this I said to you, ma'am, I wasn't on the board at that point in time. And if I'm not I was, you were. But I'm I, saying I, obviously I, it's not rarely given if this building alone has had it two out of three of the last tenants. And that's part of the problem of giving things out when maybe you shouldn't because then people look but back to them and say, Shouldn't? Who did it hurt? What did it do? I, I take an oath to uphold the zoning bylaws. I know. I'm sure yes. everyone here does. Yeah, we all do. So, in my opinion, this, this, these are the factors you have to prove. Yeah. To get a use. Variance. Okay, so let's go for parking lot shape. The parking lot is a weird shape. Have you seen it? I have the plot plan. If you want to look at it, it is a crazy shape. There is. It does not account for a lot of parking. I couldn't do a type of like growth, like let's say like a market, like we just built actually on Temple Street. Um, we couldn't do a market there. I can't do anything with high volume. It has to be one-on-one -on -one type appointments because there is only a few spots. If you look, and they're very awkward. There's two along the road there on the sidewalk. And then there's, I think, three in front of the building because then we have handicap and the handicap ramp because everything's up to code. <coughs> so I would say the parking lot does have a very specific need so that it's not bleeding all into all through Washington Street and then around the corner. So Washington Street has public parking. It, I mean, technically, does it? Yeah, yeah, but we need it. The nail salon needs it. Powerhouse needs it. Emory Contracting needs it. There's only so much of it, mm -hmm. and that's on the very corner. So with that being the only business with a lot on that entire street other than up to the bank, I would say it is pretty specific for parking. Because if you look at every single other business on that entire street, on that side of the road, the only ones in the parking lot are right there, 491, and then Santander. And that's private. Mm -hmm. That's really all there is. So you're saying that whatever use that uh, space will have, have requires some kind of a business where there isn't high... No high volume, off. by appointment, it can be planned out, that type of thing. You're not getting a ton of people going there all at once because it's not physically possible. There's already businesses sharing all that street parking, and there's not much of it when you look at the driveways coming in and out. We have about one spot in front of Powerhouse. I think there's one spot in front of the three family, one spot in front of the nail salon, and then Emory Contracting has one or two in front of them, and then that's it. Can you go on a little bit on that, though? If you look down Thaxter Avenue, that's all garage bays that you can't park in front yeah. of. And then it's um, a nice gentleman's driveway right behind us, backing up to it. I also could be wrong, but I don't believe there's street parking past that because there's nowhere, there's no shoulder or anything. It's just road and then um, someone's lawn. Up Thaxter Avenue. Up Thaxter Avenue. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, the language of that is kind of awkward, you know, because it, it does seem like the site has some limitation. Well, to use. I think, you, yes, I think yeah. you make a, a, yeah, that's a, a very good point. Valid yeah. point that the, shut, the, the lot shape is an odd shape and it would parking is an issue because of the odd shape. The parking yeah. is definitely an issue. That's mm -hmm. one of the issues of the last tenant <laughs> um, because there was too much high volume. So, we do need someone that is very like by appointment, by appointment only, smaller clientele, not that, something where you can have a ton gonna, of people. Is that what's going to happen there? Is it going to be by appointment and by... Uh... They are right now, and um, that's what they plan to do. Um, if you go now to Sacred Edition, it is very... They don't want... like So I've been there because we're actually renovating there for something separate on their, their existing location. Um, and they have like a person with a tattoo artist, a person with a tattoo artist, and that's that's who's there. It's not um, like crowds of people. It's not like all there's this no traffic off the street. There's no walk-in business. Tattoos have changed now. They don't. Not usually. Well, they, no. they don't do like that no, old school. We, like you uh, usually get a, appointments go like four to six months out or more. Out, yeah. So if you want an appointment, uh, you're looking at multiple months. Usually, he probably knows. I can um, attest to that. I'm waiting until September for my next appointment. Yeah. 
They're very, it's very well, common we, we in the can, tattoo we industry. We can condition a variance to say that it can only be by appointment, if that's something that I can you would work with that, yes. Open to. I can do that. And that way you don't have, and then that way you can use, you utilize the parking spaces that are there as opposed to. Yes. Yeah. That is fine, because right now, like, they're, they're booking out, so I know that they do all appointments. It's not, it's just when you have a good tattoo shop, you have a clientele and you have a long wait list. So I know they are by appointment only, and if they need to, they can put something on their window saying that. Is that going to cause a problem for you if, if we condition it now and then you go back to them and say, the variance is only as a with a condition that it be by appointment, where they're going to walk away, or that. Uh... I don't see it being an issue. Yeah. Um, I can let her know immediately. Um, she's actually awesome, um, and I've been corresponding with her on all the steps in the process and the paperwork. Um, so I have no problem saying that to her. And if for some reason it's a problem, then I would obviously come back to the board, and we would have to refigure. Okay. Um, but she's very good, and right now they do. Um, I'm trying to picture their door right now to see if they have a sign currently that says it. But I know they are by appointment right now. I don't have any other questions at this point, Mr. Chairman. What's that? I don't have any other questions myself. Um, well, um, I have a, uh, actually I don't need a motion. Is there anyone else would like to speak on this topic? No? I'm probably ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, can I have a motion to close the public hearing portion? So motion to close the public so portion of the hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, no opposed. So that just means we can't take any input from you. So. Okay. All right. Um, now that she uh, fought well on her feet, and uh, she did a nice job. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she recovered. She, did, <laughs> she recovered <laughs> well. Parking, that, that's actually a really good point. Um, yeah, the shape of the lot. It's it's yeah, an odd shape of lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely it definitely does uh, with the limited parking. Then, yes. Um, the last point you made, Andy. The last thing that derogation of the bylaws. Um, is that something we still got to think about? Yeah. Yeah. But, that's, but I don't know how you get away Personally, with that. I guess that's, a, you know, specific to each one of us how we think yeah. it's a derogation or not. So, yeah. Um, and it, 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 things have changed since this was enacted, obviously, without the way, as you said, the way tattoo parlors are. Well, I was just uh, thinking where they had it specifically zoned, you almost think it was like... You know, like back in the day when it would be like, oh, it, was, yeah. it had to be, it had exactly. to be away yeah. from everyone, yeah. and now adult district and all that. Sort I mean, of thing. the yeah. last time I was there, there was a the last I go to a Tiger Shark in Abington, and there was a, a much older woman that I had ever seen in there getting a tattoo. So it's so much more mainstream. It is. It's, it is much different. It is much yeah. different. And maybe that's something to look at. Maybe the planning board can look at that at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, is there any other? Discussion? Questions amongst the board? No, not from me. I'm um, also. I don't think I have any other questions. And is, there, I mean, is anyone willing to make a motion on this matter? I will. Uh, on the motion uh, or the petition of Carolina Dream Properties LLC for a variance at 175 21E uh, 12 to allow a tattoo parlor. At 491 Washington Street, I move that we approve with the condition of by appointment only due to the shape of the lot, yeah, or the, the parking, the parking yeah. situation, and uh, it'd be contingent on that being so what the use is for. Yeah, that's just condition. a condition of the variance. All right. um, we have a second for that motion. I'll second that. It, it, and again, I think I think she made a, a good point about the, the lot shape and the uh, that was yeah. that was. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I think it has. Uh, I think it meets all the conditions. Yeah. Bob, I think Bob has a question. Okay. Um, yeah. We we are entitled to put limitations. Yes. On this and was the uh, was the motion and a second with that limitation that yeah. it's by appointment only. Yes. All right. Okay. Yep. That's. I just want to verify that. Yep. Yep. Okay, um, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Sorry, I cried, guys. <laughs> no worries. No, you Never happened before. Good luck. Oh, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Good job. Made you think it out. Yeah. There's always paperwork. Oh, you never, lose, you never lose paperwork. I think I will.
basically. All right. This one. Mr. Chairman, yes. before we speak, I just want to uh, make mention that I did file with the uh, building department of disclosure of parents as I have a relationship with the next client, and he is a neighbor and a friend. I just want to let it be known that I did file a petition with the board building okay. to let them know that I had that relationship. Okay. Right, I'm just going to make sure I got the right paper here. Oh, the public notice or yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, read the public notice here. The Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 11th at the Abington Town Offices, 500 Glenowitz Way, Abington, on the petition of Rick and Rachel Collins for variance under Section 175-29 to allow a 32-foot front setback off Orange Street and a variance under 175-26A to allow a detached accessory structure to be located seven feet from the principal building at 74 Orange Street. The property is located on Assessor's Map 23 Lot 271 in the R30 zone. And tell us your name and address we'll, uh, and what you're doing. We'll be happy to hear from you. Rick Collins, 74 Orange Street. I'm here with my wife, Rachel. Uh, thanks to the board for hearing this. It's a bit different being on this side of the permitting process. Um, what we have before you tonight are two requests for variances for a planned modest addition that we hope to build soon for our house. The first is the variance needed for the front yard setback, and the second is uh, for the required 10 foot setback between the main house and uh, an accessory structure, which is a detached garage. So, just to provide you some background, uh, we purchased the home summer of 2009. We knew at the time we'd always have to do some sort of significant renovation or addition to it. Um, it, frankly, it's, it's well overdue. It's been a great home for us, but it's just getting a little bit too small with uh, four people, two of, you know, soon to be teenagers coming into the house. So it's just, uh, it's still getting to be a little bit too small. The assessor's card will say that it's a three bedroom, two bath, uh, 1200 square foot living space, but that really doesn't tell the full story. I, I give you this, this as background as for why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, like the upstairs uh, bathroom, doesn't actually have a shower, it has a tub because of the overhang of the roof. We just we can't fit in a shower. Uh, there's only one true closet in the house. It's a four by four cutout space in, in the kids' room. Uh, after 14 years, we still haven't found the third bedroom. It's supposedly a three bedroom. We don't know where the third one is. <laughs> I think at some point someone used the downstairs front parlor room for a bedroom, um, but there's no closets. There's nothing there to indicate that it was ever a bedroom. Only thing we've ever heard about is that Mr. Christensen, the one of the previous owners, used to sell uh, model railroad supplies out of his, out of the room at times. Uh, but this is you know 40, 50 years ago. Um, the deed says the house was built in 1900. Uh, we've seen town maps where there's a house on the site dating back to the 1870s, which is a way of saying that you know the house predates the town's zoning bylaws. And anyone who's gone up Orange Street knows there is, probably isn't a house on the street that meets the R30 dimensional requirements. Every house is within 30 feet of the road. Uh, you know, Orange Street runs up to Abington Center. So the whole neighborhood is kind of built in that village style where the house is kind of in the front corners of the lots. The back of them is, was kept for uh, small farms or agricultural purposes, barns, other little businesses. And that's certainly the case with our house, as you can see. Is right in the front corner of the house. Half the house doesn't fit within the established setback uh, of the original house. It not even doing anything. Um, the original structure is a Gothic revival style farmhouse. And then at some point there was a wing added onto it that was, I believe, a kitchen and then a farmer's porch. The farmer's porch eventually at some point decades ago was um, closed in. And now basically it's a dining hall. I can't call it a dining room because it's not wide enough. It's basically just a hallway that we can have a table there. So there's all sorts of little funky things with the house just because of how it's set up. Uh, we do like it, believe it or not, but you know, it's just a little bit odd in places. So we're proposing to tear down that wing, uh, that right side wing, and replace it with a 30 by 20 two-story addition. That will blend in architecturally with, there it is, with uh, the rest of it, we'll have the, we'll preserve the Greek um, revival farmhouse architecture. It fits in with the style of the neighborhood. 
Um, the roof line is going to be even with the existing roof line. We're not going higher. Um, and on the first floor will be you know, a kitchen and living room space. The existing living space is going to be a mudroom for all of our Abington Athletic stuff that is just piling up everywhere in the house at this point. Um, upstairs will be a bedroom. We'll actually have a real closet that has real storage um, and, and a master bathroom as well. So, oh, and our kids who are 12 and eight, 12 and almost eight, uh, will finally be able to have their own bedrooms. That's kind of the biggest thing. So we'll have a total of three bedrooms in the house for four people. Uh, so looking at the front setback, the front of the addition will actually be in line with the current wing of the house. We're not moving it forward. However, the farmer's porch that we're proposing does cross over that front setback line. It's a six foot deep porch. It cross over, crosses over the setback line by about two feet. And that's where we're running into one of the problems. Um, so that's where the variance comes from. We argue that the porch actually makes it a better looking project. Without it, if you're staring at, you know, standing on Orange Street, that's a fairly large structure. It's a 30 foot long, two story structure. Having that porch then starts to break up the roof line. It makes it better, I think, while you're standing on the street corner. Um, it's just, I think, it makes it a better project. The accessory uh, st structure setback in the rear. Uh, could you go back to the plot plan? Ooh. Back one. I have it on mine. Uh oh. Okay. Well, it's not showing up there. Did it freeze? Well, well anyway, the, uh, the the detached garage currently is ten and a half feet from um, the rear of uh, well, the side of the house. It's a three season porch, um, and uh, currently what's there is a gravel pathway, a little bit of a rock garden. Uh, that we grow some vegetables in once in a while. Um, what we're proposing to do is that back wall would be three feet closer. We're, we're pushing that wall out about three feet. Um, so that the distance between the structure and the garage would be about seven and a half feet. It would still be, you know, gravel there. Basically, we're just losing the little small pocket garden that we have there. Um, you know, we asked ourselves, do we really need to go back this three extra feet? We know it's going to cause kind of the, this dimensional issue. And basically the answer is yes, that without it, uh, it makes the rest of the project not work as well. Um, the other option, if you go any of the other ways, you start to create other problems. If you go closer to the street by three feet, you're, you're worsening that. Um, if you go out to the side, now you have to start cutting down trees. If you go you know, somewhere else towards the back, um, you're digging up the driveway, we probably have to lose the big maple tree that's back there. So we figured the least uh, intrusive way of doing it is the way that's proposed here. And what this drawing shows you is the areas that are we're looking for relief for. So those yellow highlighted spots are the only parts that would be in violation of the dimensional setbacks. And as you can see, when you take into consideration the entire lot, it's, it's not really that much. Um, we're leaving all the vegetation. We're not really touching the rest of the lawn. We're not touching the trees that are there. There's still 30 feet plus of, of landscaping and grass between the front porch and the streetway. Um, you know, so we understand that, yes, we're, we're kind of causing the problem because of our design requirements, but the overall impact we think meet the the needs of the variance. Um, you know, bottom line, you know, we want to have a modest, reasonable request that lets us stay in our house for a bunch of years or for decades. Um, we went to our neighbors, ran them by uh, our neighbors. One of our neighbors is here. She is the one that would be most impacted. She lives straight across the street. And she has to look at this thing every day. <laughs> um, her mother previously owned the house a couple of owners back. Uh, she's in support of it. Our two neighbors in the back who are at least 85 feet away from the structure. They're, I think you have letters of support from them. Yeah. Um, our neighbors across Belmont Street are in support of it. Uh, we didn't hear any concerns. 
So uh, the neighbors feel it will be wouldn't be an issue. Um, bottom line is that when we're finished with the house, we feel it will blend in with the surrounding homes and it certainly won't be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. So uh, we respectfully request that you approve both variances and I'm more than welcome to, uh, more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Are there any questions from the board on this? Um, the, one of the first questions I had was in your proposal, uh, you, you listed all the different evaluating pieces of the project and under one of them is fencing and you say there's no fencing being proposed at this time, but yet on the plot plan, there's a proposed fence right in front of the porch. Yep, that was there by... Uh, the architect, that we didn't want it there. Yeah, the so... The put it in because okay. it's architecturally beautiful, but it's not... We, we have no intention of putting a fence. Okay. I just, I just need a clarification on that. Nice plan. Um, This is a variance, not a section six finding, correct? You know, my understanding is that I have it's a variance request. That's meet those same four. Yeah. So, the, the, so it meets the dimensional requirements because the original property is put front corner of the lot from you know 150 years ago. It's been required there, and again, I mean, it's really hard to, you know, it, it makes it tricky in terms of how to expand the house in any way as without having much of an impact. Again, if we go much closer to the, can't go closer to the street, if we go to the west more, now we're taking down trees. If we go to the south, now we're digging up the driveway and we're still close to the garage. We can't go towards the east because then we're closer to Belmont Street. We're kind of pinned in there a little bit. Yeah, two fronts rather than, no. that's that's the issue. We've yeah. had this before with yeah. it. So you have two, two fronts. Two fronts. Two fronts. Yeah. Yeah. You're on a corner lot, so it does make it. Okay. And then the existing garage is already sitting there, so. You're either, you're the garage has been there for 100 years. Yeah, you know, they rip it down to. Right. It just seems like a. And it's in these existing non conforming strip. Correct. Single, uh, single family house. So Maybe. I think you would even be entitled to a Section 6 finding because you're making a non conforming structure more non conforming. So well, I think but, if yeah. they went up, it would be a finding, but because this. They're coming the out. The porch, yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. increasing the non-conformity, non so I think that is what triggers mm -hmm. the variance. Yeah. Did you consider a four-foot porch instead of a six-foot porch? Uh, you know, that's a great question. It's something, I guess, if, if that's the defining, deciding factor, then, then that's what it is. I think it's, it's more just how does it work in terms of moving around and... That's the question I asked. That's, that's yeah. the reason why I'm asking it, Rick. I want to make sure that you looked at all the... Variables, and there was a reason why you went to six as opposed to four. Because if you went to four right away, there would be no issue on that. Yeah, I mean, if you want to think about just you know accessibility issues, if we have someone over that's in a wheelchair, and now you're talking, you need more than four feet really to for access. Mm -hmm. We do have older family members. Um, I mean, look, it's not gonna we're not gonna not do it because we can't go up the full six feet. But you know, if it's if it's two feet, we're asking. I, I don't. I think it's a reasonable request. Okay. Yeah, if you open like a screen door outwards too, it would then it might block your progress to get by. Well, so, well the existing building no on question. the left is is twenty four point five feet yeah. from. Yeah. So this is still yeah, it, much yeah, less than still where six feet setback. Yeah. Exactly, it's still yeah. set back f further than what the, the what biggest yeah. nonconformity is, anyway. So yeah. yeah. So you heard the the factors that we have to. Yeah contemplate here. So um, soil conditions, obviously, I don't think that's an issue, right? But uh, shape and topography, I, I, I looking at your house, it sits up. It sits up on a hill, so it have to, hill. you know, the, the back is down, you know, it's probably a three feet, three foot drop off. Yeah. So going back, that has to then impact how we can move to the foundation. Right. And again, we have to dig up the driveway, we have to dig up the tree. Yeah. Um, you know, the, again, so we're trying I, to do it. I think it the, the topography has something to do with it yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other one is uh, substantial hardship, financial or otherwise. You talked about how you want your family to be able to stay there, and yeah, you we, need space. And if we wanted to, I mean, if we wanted to go get a similar size house somewhere else in Abington, it would cost significantly more. Yeah. We want, we love our yard, we love our neighborhood, we love our neighbors. Um, I think this is the gentlest way of being able to 
to stay to here. Stay. To move the garage would be very expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and if it came down yeah, to connecting it to the garage, yeah. well, that's a whole other cost we'd have to right. add to for not much of a gain of anything. Yeah. Desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Yeah, I think it improves the neighborhood. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that what's there now is looking very old and ratty, and I say it as the homeowner. <laughs> And the relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning. Violence. It's still going to look like a house in a village yeah. district. It's going to look like it, uh, it fits in. We're not trying to put 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound sack. Yeah. There's still plenty of space. We left. know people who have done that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, again, we're trying to play, do this as gentle touch as we possibly can, making sure it looks good. We don't want it to look like two completely different homes stitched together. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from I, I have one. I don't. I don't. Um, at this time. We have a motion to close the public. Do you want to check and see, see if I throw it out first? Is, is, is anyone, in, I'm sorry. Does anyone else want to come up and speak? Uh, on behalf. Do you want to speak? On behalf of. Wow. Just your name. My mother would be thrilled. Your name and, can name and address? Francine Bell, 75 Orange Street. I'm nice. directly across the street from this house. Thank I'm you. well in favor of this. Thank you. Um, and then there were a couple of letters too, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 I misplaced mine. Yeah, I can't mind about this one. Uh, I set them aside so it happened. I did too. I did too. <laughs> no, Everybody did. Uh, How did that happen? Uh, uh, here it is. You got it? Uh, we yeah. have a you couple of, one of the other uh, letters. I'll read into uh, the. In one of the other. I'll read files. into the record. Oh yeah. Um, this is a letter from Lehman. Patricia Shea at 24 Bank Street in Abington. We are writing in support of the application of Rick and Rachel Collins for variances related to their proposed addition at 74 Orange Street. We have reviewed the plans and have no objections. The Collins have been our neighbors for nearly 14 years. They have worked diligently to improve and maintain the property during that time. We believe granting the variances will not be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood and will actually result in a better project. And that's from William and Patricia Shea, 24 Bank Street. Uh, and then another one from um, uh, Michael Hardigan, 62 Belmont Street. We have the opportunity to we have had the opportunity to review the addition proposed for 74 Orange Street, and wish to voice our support for the request of variances. We are directly about to the property and believe granting the variances will not be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. The Collins family were among the first to welcome us to the neighborhood three years ago, and we are fully supportive of their upcoming project. Sincerely, Michael and Amanda Hardigan, 62 Belmont Street here in Abington. And um, finally, from Paul and Stacy Chase at 62 Warren Street, uh, we are not able to attend Thursday's meeting in person, but wanted to write in support of Rick and Rachel Collins' request for two variances for their upcoming addition at 74 Orange Street. We are also corner a lot in Orange Street and Belmont Street and understand the dimensional challenges they face. We do not believe granting the variances will be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Again, from Paul and Stacy Chase at 62 Orange Street here in Abington. I think that's all of them. Um, so the next thing would be take it back from the public. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so discussion amongst the board. I think it seems to fit everything to me. All the requirements. Yeah. Of the, uh, both. Both. Front and back, I think. Yeah. Plus, I'm I sorry. like that style of architecture. My brother, <laughs> my brother owned a house like that in upstate New York. But we love to say that. We love it too. It's one reason we bought the house. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there any other discussion amongst the board? No. Uh, could I have a motion regarding this petition? I'll make a motion on the petition of Rick and Rachel Collins for a variance under section 175-29. To allow a 32 foot front setback on Orange Street and a variance under section 175-26A to allow a detached accessory structure to be located seven feet from the principal building at 74 Orange Street. 
Property is located on Assessor's Map 23, Lot 271 in the A30 zone. And for the addition to be built in substantial compliance with a certified plot plan in the architectural plan submitted with the application. I'll second that. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 No. Um, that passes. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Very much. Um, so, is there, any other, is there anything else on the agenda for the evening? Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.